LWO on WeatherNet. Uh, lift off conditions looking pretty good. EFTS is ready for launch. Ignition. Lift off. Falcon 9 has cleared the tower. Ten. Nine. Eight. Side booster ignition. Six. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. major milestone after liftoff, max Q. It's going to occur at T plus one minute, 12 seconds. We're gonna, we're gonna throttle those engines down. We've confirmed nominal status from the avionics team. Next, max Q, that's when the vehicle experiences the greatest amount of dynamic pressure. We throttle those engines down, and afterwards we throttle them back up to keep dynamic pressures below a certain level. Is supersonic. Q. We've successfully crossed the max Q threshold. Everything is looking good with the first stage of trajectory. Next, we're going to start our MVAC chill. This is going to help us prepare for the next three major events. They occur one after another. The first one, those nine Merlin 1D engines are going to cut off. That's known as MECO or main engine cutoff. Right after that, the first and second stage will separate. And then the Merlin vacuum back engine, engine on the second start. stage will turn on. That's known as SES-1. About 15 seconds away from throttling down those Merlin 1D engines, you'll, you'll start to see that visual change and that plume you see on the screen. Main engine cut off. State separation confirmed. All right, all good news here. We had successful main engine cutoff, stage separation, and second engine start one. Our next milestone is fairing deployment. Those two fairing halves on the top of the second stage are no longer needed, and we'll jettison them uh, to help expose the Turksat 5A satellite to space and attempt to recover those later on. Second stage is on a nominal trajectory. separation confirm and you saw there we just jettisoned our two fairing halves it's our first good view of turksat 5a it's now exposed to space and those two fairing halves are heading back down to sea level
For those of you just joining, we're four minutes into flight on today's mission of carrying the Turksat 5A satellite to its intended Acquisition orbit on the Falcon 9. Bermuda. We're currently in the first of two planned MBAC burns. That's what you see on your screen currently. Uh, it's not pictured here currently, but that's uh, after stage separation. The first stage, we're attempting to recover it. Its velocity at separation was about 2,200 meters per second, or 5,000 miles per hour. Once the separation occurs, the first stage is still moving at such a high velocity, it continues to raise its altitude as it approaches its apogee, and then it will coast down a couple minutes before it starts its return back to Earth. Up next, what you'll hopefully see is the first stage's entry burn. This is the first major milestone for first stage recovery. For entry burn, we're going to relight the center of those nine Merlin engines. It's actually engine number nine. Uh, and partway through this transition, we then ignite two more engines, engine one and engine five, which means we have three total M1D engines helping slow down the vehicle as it passes into the Earth's increasingly thickening atmosphere. That burn will last about 30 seconds, and we're just about a minute away from that. And also not pictured here, those two fairing halves are they're making way their way down. It'll take a lot longer than it will for the first stage, but we will attempt to recover those later on in the evening. Expected loss of signal, Cape. First stage is now uh, less than 100 kilometers above sea level, continuing to make its way down. Just 10 seconds away from entry burn. As you, as you watch this here, watch that exhaust expand as it goes from one engine to three engines. It'll sort of elongate. Stage one entry burn startup. Entry burn has begun. All three engines are running currently. You saw it, entry burn has shut down. Next, a couple milestones happening back to back. On the second stage on your screen, we're gonna turn off that MBAC engine. It's known as SECO-1, or second engine cutoff one. And right after that milestone, we're going to start our final first stage burn, the landing burn, hopefully culminating with a fourth landing of this particular first stage. Going back to SECO, we shut down the MBAC, and after that period, we actually allow the second stage to coast. This event preserves the fuel until we need it for that final burn, uh, second engine start number two, and it takes us to our targeted orbit for today's satellite deploy. We're about 30 seconds away from SECO-1, and after that, only about 30 more seconds until we hopefully have a nice view of the first stage touching down on our Just Read the Instructions autonomous drone ship. Stage two FTS is saved. Stage one landing burn, sorry. Our landing burn has started. Our second engine has also cut off as you can see. We're just awaiting confirmation of good orbital insertion. And back on sea level, you can see here the drone ship. We have confirmation to go over orbit on the second stage and... Looks like we have a good landing on, on the drone ship as well. This is SpaceX's 71st successful first stage recovery. This particular booster is fourth successful recovery, getting ready for its fifth flight in the future.
That's our secondary mission, vehicle reusability, but our primary mission is not yet complete. The second stage vehicle has now entered its first coast phase and will last about 18 minutes. After that, we're going to light that MVAC engine for a second time shortly after at about T plus 26 minutes, 51 seconds. For those of you interested in keeping an eye on where that second stage is throughout the coast phase, you can follow along with our animation for the next 18 minutes. Otherwise, we'll see you back here at T plus 25 minutes. And currently, we do expect for that second engine start, SCS2, to occur. Uh, at this point, the nominal burn duration is 70 seconds. Currently, that second stage is traveling almost 8,000 meters per second. This burn is going to add another 2,000 meters per second to the Falcon 9 speed before it shuts down for a second time. This shutdown event called Seco 2, which is hopefully uh, 45 seconds from now, that stands for second engine cutoff number two. This burn places the Turksat 5A satellite into the required orbit prior to separating it from Falcon 9. And at this point, we expect for a second engine cutoff two to occur. Like I mentioned before, the ground station over at Gabon in, uh, in Central Africa is down at the moment. However, uh, the Falcon 9 second stage is an incredibly reliable vehicle, and we trust those events are occurring at those nominal callouts. But we will come back after our next coast phase and have some information when we're over the next ground station and give you more information. And as a reminder, the Turksat 5A satellite is still attached to that second stage. The set stage is now going to start a slow spin, kind of like a football, uh, that helps stabilize the satellite when it's released. This transition is going to take five more minutes, and satellite separation is expected to occur at T plus 33 minutes and four seconds. Now, while we wait for the satellite to get closer to its final destination, we'll pause commentary during this coasting phase, but we'll come back just before stage two separation takes place at T plus 32 minutes. Payload deploy confirms. And you can see it. We have confirmation of successful payload separation of the Turksat 5A satellite. And that will now bring today's webcast coverage to a close. Before we go, we really want to thank Airbus, our customer, for entrusting us with the Turksat 5A satellite. This mission marked the fourth launch and landing for this Falcon 9 booster. It was also SpaceX's 71st successful booster landing, as well as SpaceX's 50th time for flying a reflown booster. Also, it's our first launch for 2021. To the range and the FAA, we appreciate having your support and acceptance for today's mission. And to all of our viewers, you, as always, thank you for tuning in and have a great evening.